You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Okay, we're going to get started for the Town of Brantford Board of Finance meeting for November 22nd, 2021. And first on the agenda is the approved in minutes of the September 27th, 2021 meeting. I'll move the minutes. Been, second. Been moved and second. Is there discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> second on the agenda is citizens' communications and if there's anyone from the public who would like to comment on the agenda items, now's your chance. With no takers, I'll move on. Um, before I move on, I'd just like to welcome uh, Deb Con Conklin, who is our new treasurer. Congratulations and welcome. And number three is to hear a presentation from the Andrew L. Group and CYL Financial Synergies with regards to the performance of the town of Brantford Police Pension Fund for the quarter ended September 30th, 2021, and if necessary, rebalance the portfolio. And we'll also hear the reports with regards to the Brantford Volunteer Fire Incentive Plan and also the other post-employment benefit trusts. Gentlemen, would you like to come forward? Welcome, Rob and Charlie. Thank you. So I'm going to review very, very briefly uh, the financial markets um, and the economy um, over the last uh, last quarter or so. Uh, the, the U.S. market has been making new highs. I think it made an uh, intraday high today. Uh, and with all the uncertainty that we see in Washington, you know, throughout the world, um, people are kind of uh, con not concerned, but uh, trying to figure out why the, the market uh, continu continues to rise. Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons we believe that uh, the U.S. market continues to rise is that a tremendous amount of money is being pumped into the system um, through through legislation and proposed legislation, and the market is discounting the the next phase of, of the proposed uh, legislation. In addition to that, um, uh, the Federal Reserve continues, while it's slowed, uh, the degree to which it's buying securities and and, and pumping uh, money into the into the economy or which ultimately goes into the into the markets um uh the the, the pace is slowing so uh a, lo a lot of uh, uh financial uh market analysts um anticipated a complete stop to that but that's that's not what they did so um there is uh still money coming into the markets uh via you know federal reserve board actions. Um, the uh, larger cap stocks um, have outperformed the smaller and, and mid cap stocks. Um, and uh, I believe that's going to be um, uh, the place to, c to continue to be. Um, the outperformance uh, this quarter and recently has been uh, Energy, which is is benefiting from much higher inflation, as well as uh, as well as banks, um, who do well in anticipation of rates rising. So, if they anticipate rates are going to rise, uh, uh, they're going to be able to to borrow via deposits at low rates and lend at higher rates. So that's that's what's expected. I, I don't think that's going to continue. And I think the, the higher quality companies 
with uh, strong balance sheets, good cash flows, uh, and um, longer term high growth potential are going to be the, the types of companies that, that perform real well. So rates are rising in the, you know, as a result of um, actual inflation uh, or reported inflation and um, in anticipation of uh, higher inflation you know, go, going forward. But it's a very, very confusing and difficult time to uh, be prognosticating on on what will happen since since uh, since what's going on in Washington is is so confusing. It's confusing to them, so it makes it you know confusing to us. Uh, so we're, we don't we are not recommending uh, any rebalance to the current portfolio. Um, one of the things that we did do was um, back in August. We, um, we didn't dump money into the market. It was higher. We saw um, a, a pullback. Um, and during that pullback, we were able to a add money. So, so that was, um, you know, fortuitous. Uh, but at that time, we felt like uh, we, we were due for a pullback, and we, and we, did, we did get that in September and October. So that worked that well. Any questions? So you would not project any change to the fixed income part of the portfolio, i.e. the bonds? Yeah. So we went over this with the finance director in a bit of detail. And as we're currently, when we look at our how we're allocated, so if I take the police pension as a starting point, in the report you're looking at, we are at 33.5% in fixed income, in our core investment grade fixed page, income. Yeah. Um, page, that's on page, I apologize, page 15 of the police pension. <clears throat> so at 33.5% as of quarter end in investment grade fixed income versus our policy at 35%. We're slightly underweight fixed income, um, and we're overweight cash at being 4.4% in cash versus a policy of 2.5. So the decision is to be deliberately overweight cash at the, in this environment compared to fixed income. Right. Um, as the concern of rising interest rates will cause fixed income to have negative returns on an immediate term basis, which is what we're seeing if you look at the actual bond index at down 1.5% this year down 3% through last night. Um, it definitely creates a little bit of a headwind for fixed income assets. So we're choosing to be overweight cash versus fixed income and maintaining our equity positions that at end of quarter we're at arguably policy at 54.6% versus a policy of 55. So were you asking because REITs had risen and maybe we could capture uh, bonds at a higher higher interest rate no mm. okay no. Uh, be, I'm, uh, that's no, good. I, I, in, uh, in terms of what I, I see in other investment management there they're shifting to which was your term you know the quality companies that will drive with a better income stream and dividend stream uh, versus cutting into a lower percentage in, in the bond market right um, because I deal with a small foundation. So, you know, the, the old days of the 60, 30, 10 philosophy yeah. is dead. Yeah. You know, uh, and... Uh, it's been dead for a while. Yeah, it's been dead for a while. We just haven't really discussed it, but I, right. I, I think cash is king. Yeah. And uh, I think the more you shift to the cash, you'll be better prepared for... 22, 23. Yeah, and, and beyond. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No. So you're also, you're not suggesting that we rebalance, nor are you suggesting that we change our policy. Correct. Correct. Okay. So as our policy hits, that's really, we're within the parameters of the policies. Right. That's really, 
Yes. Uh, we're at, and with the equity side, you're just touching the uh, the limit at this point. Yeah. We're basically right on the right. at quarter right. red. We are on our policy target. Yeah. Right. As of last night, with the lift we've had in equities on a quarter to date basis, so which is October and three quarters of November. So we've during that period we've had the equity markets rise about eight percent. And that's brought our equity allocation through last night up to 57%. So we are now slightly overweight equities right, right. Um, by a small margin, but not something that makes us concerned or, or worried. Okay. Thanks. But we're, we're comfortable. I'm sorry, Joe. Oh, go ahead. No, we're comfortable with, with the with the cash allocation because we think, or we anticipate that rates will continue to rise. You know, maybe in fits and starts, not on a secular basis, but um, you know, a, a little bit of a jagged uh, movement. But but clearly, we think uh, rates are going to rise um, once this money that's been been allocated by the uh, by the government gets into the system. A lot of the money hasn't even been put to work. Uh, so uh, once that happens, um, that's inflationary. That'll increase the the um, the rate on on bonds, and at that point, uh, you know, we might want to um, increase our allocation to bonds. Okay. Any other questions on Charlie's presentation? No, thank you. There's another question. It's kind of off the mark, though. Another committee. I'm in. Uh, but we're talking about structured investments. Have you heard of it? Yes. You got a definition for it? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, it's, it's structured, um, well, they're products. They're called structured products. Is the yeah, they're, they're, they're products. Uh, and um, the major Wall Street firms, some tertiary firms, uh, uh, offer them. And basically, what they do, and there, there's various, uh, yeah, it's a basket various of kinds. With could be real estate, uh, could hmm. be uh, stocks with a with a that you can't lose more than ten percent, um, but it has a cap on the on how how much you can earn. You're not going to earn what the the market provides. Um, you know if. If it does, uh, fees are absolutely um, enormous um, relative to um, traditional um, investment management. And um, I've never, I'm in my 40th year of doing this, I've never bought a structured product for any client. What's the risk of a structured fund? Is uh, it, is it very high? Uh, it could be uh, very high, um, depending on you know what what is in it. Um, for example, back in two thousand seven, eight, nine, uh, those mortgage backs that were uh, a lot of the mortgage backed uh, bonds that ultimately led to the Great Recession were structured structured products. But a structured product could be oil and gas wells. It could be, um, as I said, real estate. Uh, There's a number of ways that they could slice and dice it to manufacture those products. The other risk that come there's a couple of other risks that come in. There's liquidity provisions. Yeah. In addition to that, the underlying issuer, you're a creditor to that issuer. So if the issuer is investment bank X that you are actually a lender to them and now a creditor and you're get, you're getting a rate of return based on that structured product mm -hmm. and if that issuer were to default on their debt you are in line as a creditor um, as opposed to owning the actual investment securities so there's a couple of elements of risk there it's not appropriate for these pension funds no Okay, we'll uh, move on away from structured products and uh, unstructured. Do you have any other questions? Any other questions before Rob gets into the details of performance? Charlie, you're good. Uh, no, I'm good. Okay, so all right, 
So in Michael Lepore's absence, I'm gonna take us through the performance reports. Um, so I apologize if I'm not as refined with, as he is in going through page to page. So we are gonna start in the police pension and we're gonna start on page 19. So as we start on page 19 in the top right corner, we're encapsulating 222 months of reporting data. And as you'll see in the annual return, um, for this entire period is 6.14%, pretty much spot on our policy. And, and that equates down to, and that's also when you translate that to the beta, which is the level of risk at 8% less than the market or our policy. So that's at a beta of 92. And as you continue to go down, you'll see that we, that's which translates to our standard deviation at seven and a half versus 8% for our benchmarks. So standard deviations are measure of risk, how much volatility we experience. And that is a slight positive alpha at 0 0.03. So continuing to behave well in that regard. So if we look at the most recent quarter for the police pension, we started the quarter at 30 million 027. We had net contributions into the plan at $752,000. And an investment change at negative $417,000, bringing us to 30 million 362. And if you go to the far right, you'll see how we started the year, we started the, this plan in 2003 with 8.3 million, with net contributions at 1.1 million and $20.8 million in investment return, bringing us to that 30 million 362. So I'm now gonna flip backwards and we're gonna go to page 15. So Rob, what's with the negative investment uh, change? We're gonna go right to page 15 to answer that question. Okay. In the, in, in the, for the recording period, um, the, in the, which is the quarter ending September 30th, the pension plan had a negative, a return of negative 1.36%. And that was attributed to a negative 2.5% return from the equity component of the portfolio. And a flat return to a slightly negative return from the fixed income manager at negative 0.14%. So the third quarter of the year was a negative was a negative period in the markets. If I br and when we bring that forward through last night, the pension the police pension is up to 30.9 million, which has gained about two percent through last night, which has brought us to you know, net positive if you link those two periods. Thanks. And if we look at this, as you could read across, you can see the the year to date at 7.34 versus our policy at 7.11, so slightly ahead of policy. And continuing across, you get to the inception at 6.14 versus 6.22. Um, so really the most recent period is a result of a negative return, as Charlie was talking about, about in the month of September, we had a down market, and it was fairly sharp decline in the month of September, which took away the, the returns in the equity markets. So when you look at the global markets, the global markets were negative two or three percent on the quarter, from just at a broad level. Thanks. Any questions on the experience of the police pension? We're all set. Okay. So flipping into the next tab for the the volunteer fire incentive plan, and again we're going to go to page nineteen. And the volunteer fire pension has, is measured over a period of 70 months at this point, since we split the, pe the fire away from the police pension in 2015. And you'll see the annualized return there at 7.26 versus 7.69, so very tight to our benchmark. Uh, and again, you'll see that beta at 0.92, so how, how are we doing compared to, how much risk are we taking compared to our policy? And that's what you see translated in our annualized standard deviation at 8.5 versus 9.3, and a modestly positive alpha at 0.02. So the important risk statistics that we've been adding some value over the life of this fund. And when we look at the, the fire pension, we started the, the third quarter at 1,492. We had net contributions of $77,000, investment change of negative 21,000, bringing us to ending market value of 1,549,000. And if you go to the far right, you can see those, the, the same information as we talked about with the police. We had a starting balance at 55,000 at the 
beginning of this plan and net contributions of a million dollars bringing us in to $460,000 of investment returns over the life from 2015. And if we go back to page 15, you'll see a very similar table as we discussed with the police pension with the uh, overall plan on the then that quarter that were the reporting quarter at negative 1.34% on a year to date basis for the calendar year up 7.2 versus 7.11 for our benchmark. And you can see again, as you look down, you'll see how each of the components, the equity is negative 2.6, the fixed income at negative 0.01. So arguably flat for that period. And our high yield, our high yield manager spot on the benchmark at positive 0.95. And if you go back to inception at 727.26 versus 7.69 um, overall. Okay. Thanks, got questions on this fund? Mm. All set. Rob? Yes, Lisa. May I ask what's the ending balance as of Friday? Thank you. The ending balance as of Friday was 1,593,141. Thank you. Which is up about 3.2% for the quarter. Thank you, Lisa. So if we move into the next tab into the OPEB trust. And here we are going to go to page 20. For the OPEB trust, we measure over 123 months of reporting period. The annualized return here has been 5.81% versus our policy at 5.94. You'll see that our beta is at 0.84, so 16% less risk than our overall policy. And that's a result of very specific decisions made over the life of the fund of how we deployed cash, especially in the very early years, it gave us to taking less risk than the market. But it held back the return a little bit. Very slightly, and more, more so in the recent period. And uh, when you look at the standard deviation at 6.97 versus 7.99, and a slightly better alpha over the life of this plan at 0 0.07. Now, if we look at the most recent three-month three period for the quarter reporting, we started the period at 37,083,381. We had net withdrawals of $18,661 an investment change of negative 303,996 to an ending balance of 36,760,723. And as you see on the far right from inception, the plan was incepted with just over $4 million. It's had net cash flow of positive contributions of just over 24 million to have eight point, almost $8.6 million in investment return over the life of the plan. And if we go back to page 15, this is where we'll see the experience of the overall OPEB trust. As we look at the OPEB with 36760, 36, you'll see here for the most recent quarter, it was negative, point, negative 0.82% versus our policy at negative 0.63. And then you can see the various components below to see what's attributed to the, the experience of the OPEP trust. And this type of experience actually illustrates what's been going on inside the other plans as well because the investments are substantially similar. And as you go through the time period, you'll see on a year-to-date basis up 4.84 versus 4.76. And since inception at 5.81 versus 5.94. Um, as you'll know, we have a large cash waiting inside the OPEB trust, which is the tranches of money for the next that we are investing deliberately over the next seven years, um, pursuant to the discussions we've had with the board in the past and with Mr. Finch. And we are due, as a footnote there, we are due to invest a piece of that tranche in January. And the balance as of uh, and the, the balance day. as of last night is thirty seven million four hundred seventy thousand eight hundred and sixteen dollars. So we're back in the positive. Yes. For the quarter. <clears throat> yeah, it's up about two percent for the year on a quarter to date basis, which right. puts us to a positive number year to date. Okay. Questions? 
Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, yeah, uh, question to Kathy, but uh, sure. do you think at our next meeting uh, we could look at the number of retirees in each one of the pensions that happened this year, meaning people that have retired? And I know we don't know what's going to happen next year, but sometimes people start the process just to see how we're trending. You know, are we getting more a senior population? Wanted to provide you with a census. A census, thank you. I can request that. And that'd be good. Well, I'm sure Jim discusses that with yeah, you. But exactly. That yeah. that ties into the immunization of the pension. Right. So you're matching the liabilities against the asset allocation. Well said. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Harry. Any other comments or questions on this report? If not, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. Take care. Have a nice Thanksgiving. You too. Okay, number six on the agenda is to consider a request from the finance director to recommend that the Board of Finance appoint the accounting firm of Clifton Larson Allen, LLP, formerly Bloom Shapiro, to perform the annual audit for the fiscal year ended. June 30th, 2021, at the proposal fee, at the proposed fee of $67,085. And uh, I might note to the board that ordinarily we would make this uh, appointment in May or June at the latest. And it's been delayed because uh, the way the audit was delayed due to some of the issues that were, uh, we've all discussed in prior meetings. Um, Catherine, you want to uh, speak to this request? Pretty much covered everything. Um, so yes, under state statute, the board is required to appoint an independent audit firm annually. This year, because of the delay in the audit, this is why we're coming with you to the request right now. Clifton Larson Allen was merged with Bloom Shapiro, which is why that this is the firm we're requesting. They did give us a proposal at 67.085, about a 2.25% increase over last year. So that's the request in front of you. Okay. Um, and with regards to any preliminary work that they're doing now? They have not started, um, they will not start the preliminary work until they're appointed. Okay. So they will probably move very quickly um, because the annual audit is supposed to be completed by December 31st without extension. So I would assume that they would start coming in shortly thereafter they're appointed. And do you expect the audit to be completed on time? No. I, I wish I could say, but I don't believe so. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's the town and the board. I do believe that there are certain items that the board will have to have um, work completed on first. They're, they're ED-001. There's a mandated date by December 31st. So. I think it's highly unlikely it will be completed on time. And so you've been requesting an extension from the state? I do believe so. Okay. And the status of any work that's being done in the tax department? Right now we're going through, um, we're preparing a list of everything that has to be completed that's, you know, where we are in the process of certain things. Um, it's very time consuming. I do believe I'm going to have to get the auditors involved as well in this couple of these items. Um, I can give a more of an updated at your next meeting because right now it's we've just started the process. Okay. Uh, okay. And so some of the steps that we had talked about at the prior meeting are being instituted with regards to internal controls? Yes. Okay. And you're working with a new tax collector in order to review yes, and their staff. Yes, and their staff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions from the board, Charlie? On the 2.25 percent increase, do you think that's large because of the merger, or how did it compare to last year's increase? Mm, you know what? I I think last year was two percent. It might have even been two and a half. Um, I mean, so they so I think it's right in line. No, they didn't. Yeah, it didn't jump up dramatically. No. They did, they, did they perform additional field work 
in order to complete the yes this past year's um, audit do yes. you expect them to be doing they've, they've also been in doing field work in the summer or not yes they were here during the summer but it was all tailored to the 2020 okay. audit so they did so they yes were so uh -huh. i can imagine they're going to have more testing this year because of some of those findings so that would be both for the sewer and for the tax yes so there is actually more field work that we do. Do you think we're going to have the same representatives? I believe that Mike Popham, who has been the manager on our on our assigned to our team for years, um, is going to be there. I have yet to meet any of the other staff. They are working a lot of it remotely, uh, you know, with COVID. Um, I do know they'll be coming in, but there's there um, there are other staff sends to have a revolving door. Almost, and it's it's it, that's common with auditing firms. You know, our manager, the partner, and then the manager are generally the the people that are stagnant. But we do tend to have other people that kind of come in and out through the years. Thanks. You're welcome. Any questions, Harry? You got anything? You're good, Jeff. I'll, just, I'll move it to Clifton Marks and I'll be appointed the uh, auditors. Okay, motion's been made. Second. Second by Harry. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. And uh, item number seven is to consider and if appropriate, approve and adopt the attached 2022 meeting schedule. And uh, it's also on the back of here. Yeah. Uh, Anybody uh, have an issue with that? Uh, I think we've, Lisa's done a good job putting this together. Okay. Uh, somebody want to move that? Moved by Jeff. Second. Second by Harry. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And number eight is with no other business to come before the board, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move it. So move. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BranfordTV.org.